Today we're going to do a service on the Oasis Hydronic Heating System. The model is a CH50. When first performing a service, always just turn on the heater and make sure everything is coming on and firing off correctly. Go ahead and make sure the power light is on the front of the heater. And then turn on your burner switch. The combustion fan will shut off and your igniter light will come on and you'll see a glow inside of the burn chamber and the heater will fire off. Now that we know that the heater's firing off and running, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn off the burner switch and then go ahead and turn the power off as well. The tools that are gonna be involved today in the service are gonna be a screw gun, flashlight, uh, channel locks or pliers, crescent wrench, a 5 8 wrench, a pick, and also a filter wrench for the fuel filter. Okay. What is involved in the annual service is an igniter, a stone filter for your compressor, a nozzle filter for your nozzle, an o-ring for your nozzle, and also the fuel filter. Do you have to change the igniter every year? Not every year. Um, it's a good idea to keep one on hand, but you don't necessarily have to change it out every year. Perfect. All right, now that the heater's off, we're gonna grab our screwdriver with a Phillips number two bit and remove the outer perimeter screws. We don't wanna remove these inner screws because that's what attaches your control board to the front panel. Inside, okay. So we already removed a, a few screws just to speed up time here. But we're gonna drop down that front cover and make sure you don't hit the buttons on anything when you are doing the service. Okay. Now that we have the front panel off, we can remove our secondary panel to the burn box. And there's just four number two screws as well. Remove the panel, set it aside with your screws as well. And right now the combustion fan is running because we just shut it off. Um, that will shut off in two minutes. First thing we want to do is locate this thumb screw that is on the fuel block. And you may be able to do it just with your hands or you might need to get your channel locks or pliers to loosen up that screw. Mm -hmm. But we want to loosen that screw and the whole fuel block will come out of that burn tube. And we turn this fuel block around and that's where our nozzle is going to be located. And also on the nozzle, you're going to have a stamp date of when this nozzle has been changed out if it's ever has. So get our 5 8 wrench, put it on the nozzle there, should be able to just twist it out. And then remove that nozzle. And behind the nozzle is where our stone filter is going to be. Would you get a paper towel or something? Yeah, that might be helpful. Paper towel, set it down before you tap it out because there is going to be a little fuel in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a paper towel and set the nozzle away. Grab a paper towel. I have to tap it up against the, the side case here and that stone filter will come out. And we are, we are going to replace that before reinstalling the nozzle. Nice. I'm going to show you how to clean the nozzle now that we have it out. Okay. So again, grab your 5 8 wrench, put it on the cone of the nozzle here, and with your crescent wrench, we want to tighten it down on the stem might want to wiggle it back and forth when you tighten your wrench so we get a good bite on it. Kind of squares it up, right? Yep. And then just normal threads. The, the stem piece will actually unscrew from the cone. And it's important to do this over a bench because there's going to be a little distributor orifice inside. A small little part, we don't want to lose it. 
So once we unscrew this, that distributor orifice is going to come out. And this is important to clean. These little grooves here, mm -hmm. you want to clean those with some brake cleaner. Um, and also make sure you clean the inside of here. You, you do not want to stick anything inside of that tip. But we can spray it down, brake cleaner, any type of solvent. Um, make sure it's clean. And also you can do the same thing to the cone here. Go ahead and just spray it out. If there's heavy debris in there, you might want to get a Q-tip and clean it. You know, just mm -hmm. clean it up really good. Sure. And then when we reinstall this, also make sure the stem is clean. You can also spray a little brake cleaner down that. And then this is an important part. When we do reinstall this, or when we reassemble it, we want to put the distributor orifice straight down in that stem piece. Mm -hmm. Hold it straight up and down, and then just screw on the cone on the stem. Uh, make sure you don't cross thread it either. So you should be able to screw it down pretty tight. Screw it down finger tight and make sure you can see the hole in the, in the distributor there. There it is. There Perfect. So it looks like it's in there the right way so we can tighten it down. Again, get your crescent wrench and your 5 8 wrench. Tighten down the crescent wrench on the stem. Just give it a little turn. You don't have to, you know, muscle it down real hard. And then we just clean the nozzle. Now we're going to replace the O-ring on the nozzle. So you might want to get your pick or you might be able to just take it off, the old O-ring off with your hands. So you set that one aside and grab the new one here. Put the new one on there. And then your nozzle's been serviced. Perfect. And now back to the fuel block. We're going to take this stone filter, the new one, turn your fuel block upside down here, and drop that stone filter down in there. Your, your pick might come in handy right here. So you can drop that filter down in there. Make sure it sets all the way down in there. Yep. And then... With your nozzle, you can lubricate your O-ring with some diesel fuel or whatever you may have to lubricate it there. Now the nozzle should screw in pretty easily. Uh, important just to tighten it all the way down so it seats all the way up against the fuel block right there. So once it's finger tight, you can grab your 5 8 wrench again and just snug it down tight. Perfect. You just put that baby back in there, huh? Uh, next, we're gonna change out the igniter. And the igniter, what holds the igniter in is this pin clip right in here. Mm -hmm. You wanna pull that pin out and then pull your igniter out. It comes straight out. And it's a pretty fragile part, so uh, you want to be careful when, when removing it. This one still worked, so I'm just going to remove it and set it aside for a spare. In case I get in a pinch and I, and I need one when I'm on the road, it's going to be a good, good backup part for me. Good call. So when, when pulling the, the tip off the igniter here, um, which protects the actual igniter, you want to pull it straight off. If you bend it, you're going to break that tip, and then uh, gonna it's not going to work. <laughs> All right. So when we do put it back in our igniter holder, it's important that we see the horseshoe shape when we do put it in there. You don't want to put it in on edge. Your heater is going to have a hard time lighting off. Gotcha. So if we stick it down in there, And then once it's in there, we could always look down in the burn tube as well, just to make sure we see that horseshoe shape of the igniter in there. Yeah, let's see that flashlight. You got a flashlight in there, so maybe you can see a little better. Yep. So you can see the horseshoe shape there. Got it. And then we're gonna reinstall our pin. 
So there's a hole on each side of that igniter holder. When putting that pin in, you want to go through one side and angle the pin upwards. Go past the igniter and find the hole on the other side. Perfect. And now we can connect our wires. Uh, one's male, one's female. It's only going to go in one way. Pretty hard to mess that up. Yeah. Uh, one thing you can mess up here is if this male side connector gets pushed up, you're not going to make a connection. Oh, you could slip it right by, huh? Yep, slip okay. it right by. So make sure the male and female actually go within each other. Perfect. So we got that in there. We got that in there. And one other thing to check at this time is to look down in the burn chamber and see if there's any debris down in there, um, see if there's any buildup. If there is any buildup, we want to remove this burn tube by the four, four nuts in each side mm -hmm. and remove that burn tube and clean out the inside and the water jacket as well. Um, this one looks pretty clean, so we're not going to do that. Okay. I can't really see it on the video, but they'll be able to see it when they put a flashlight back in there. Yeah, so. you can see uh, buildup or crustacean. Um, Usually this burns one's, really clean. This one looks pretty good. Okay. So we're going to put the fuel black fuel block back in and then again tighten down the thumb screw you don't need to reef it down or nothing just finger tights usually pretty good there yeah maybe a little maybe grab the wrench and put a little extra on there yeah you can put maybe maybe a quarter turn um, one thing you just you just don't want to really tighten it down because it is aluminum and it mm -hmm. could strip out on you gotcha. So we could just turn it just, yeah, just a, little a little bit. Just a teeny bit, yeah. And, and that should be good. Okay, good. And then we could reinstall the burner cover. When you do reinstall the burner cover, it's important that you put the sight glass window in the right upper right hand corner. That way when we put on our very front panel, we'll be able to see the flame. I'm going to reinstall the four screws here. And usually I like to just start them finger tight so we don't get any cross threads. So I got them all finger tight. We're gonna go ahead and screw them in now. Everything inside the burn box is complete. We're gonna move on to our air filter on the compressor. Um, again, we're gonna take our 5 8 inch wrench and remove that, that filter here. have a, r a ratchet wrench so it makes it a little easier to uh, work with there. Just remove that filter. Set it aside. Get the new one. And screw it into place. And then again, this is one you don't want to over tighten because it is a plastic head where it's going into. Right. And you could crack it pretty easily. So finger tight and then maybe give it a half a turn or so. We just don't want to tighten it down too tight. Good. So everything inside the front panel is complete on the service. One important thing is when you are putting your front cover back on, there is a combustion tube. And this is where we get our combustion air for our burner. Um, we want to make sure it's pushed down and not sticking up. If it's sticking up, something like this, we put our cover on it's just going to choke off our incoming air right the heater is going to flame out or smoke on you um, so important to keep that down and reinstall the front cover also when putting the front cover on just make sure the wires coming out of your control board get pushed inside of the pan and they don't get pinched So 
So again, I'm just going to put a couple screws in there finger tight. Make sure we reinstall all the screws around the perimeter. I'm just going to do the two just to speed up the video a bit. And now everything's complete in there. We can go up to our fuel filter and change out our fuel filter. On most of the new Mars, they're located on the front firewall uh, next to your generator on the driver's side. Um, I know sometimes they're in the compartment of the heater as well, but most of the time it's up in the firewall. And this is where your uh, filter wrench could come in handy. Get your filter wrench, unscrew it, and you might want to get a couple rags because there will be uh, diesel fuel dripping out of here. I just want to unscrew that. And set the old one aside aside and also on the bottom side of this housing there's an o-ring um, we're going to want to change that out and this o-ring comes with with the fuel filter and this might be a good time where your pick comes in handy just remove that old o-ring there set that aside grab the new one slip it on over it and then when you do reinstall your fuel filter it's always a good idea to to fill it with diesel fuel first um, this will prevent a flame out so fill up your filter first um, and then you can also lubricate the seal here so we get a nice tight squeeze on everything uh, we won't get any binding on that gasket so I just want to tighten that up Get it about hand tight there, and then you can do another half to about a three quarter turn just to tighten this filter down. And now that that's complete, um, that's completed everything on the service, we're gonna go ahead and turn the heater back on and make sure everything's gonna fire off again like it should. Perfect. So go ahead and turn your power back on. You'll see your power light come on. And then go over to your burner switch turn your burner switch on and we'll see the igniter light come on and then followed by the compressor fuel pump compress and also compressor and then inside we should see a nice rich color flame it should look really intense like the sun right there that's a good burning point check your exhaust make sure you don't have any smoke coming out and you just completed a service on your Oasis hydronic heating system. Perfect.